Hello everyone, Louie here with TPC, the Tactical Performance Center. We're always looking for ways to improve our own shooting abilities and those of our students. Looking for new tools that may help us explain things better and help students identify things that they can improve upon. We have found such a tool in the Mantis training system. The Mantis system allows for a measurement of movement within the gun as you press the trigger. That's critically important because as TPC teaches, the one and only purpose of trigger control is to keep the gun within an acceptable target area as the round fires. The Mantis system helps in that regard so we can identify areas of performance in which we can improve. We use it both in dry fire and live fire and have found significant improvements in our own shooting abilities and those of our students when we couple our training system with tools such as the Mantis. At the Tactical Performance Center, we really preach awareness in training because that allows you to focus on what is necessary to improve performance. Tools such as the Mantis allows for a diagnostic analysis of what's occurring as the gun comes on target, as you press the trigger, and allows you to look at that data afterwards to look for things that you can improve upon. Many times when we're shooting, especially in live fire, we get overwhelmed with too many things going on at one time or trying to improve too many things at one time instead of paying attention to one or two areas of focus in order to really gain that improvement. The Mantis allows for that diagnosis after the fact when you can take some time and look at your actual performance. We'll be doing a series of videos. My partner Rawson and I will be demonstrating various techniques and exercises that you can use to improve your own performance, both in live fire and dry fire, utilizing the Mantis training system and exploiting it to its absolute fullest benefit. So I'm sure many of you have seen the error chart that was probably created back in the 1950s explaining what happens when you place too much finger on the trigger or too little finger on the trigger or healing the hand or not isolating the trigger finger or jerking as many people would say. What if I told you that much of that is untrue? So what we're gonna do is utilize the Mantis and dry fire right now by placing my trigger finger on different parts in terms of actual contact to the face of the trigger. At TPC, we emphasize that the number one purpose in trigger control is to keep the gun within that acceptable target area as the gun fires. How do we achieve that? The first principle we focus on is only moving the trigger finger. And we follow that up with the direction of the press, which is straight to the rear. They are two core principles behind the trigger control. Only one purpose, but two core principles. First principle of the trigger control is isolation, the action of the finger. Simply said, only finger moves. I like to use that analogy, it's like you want to say to somebody, come here, come here. You're moving only the index finger. Pay attention not to squeeze the rest of the fingers. Ideally, you want to move that trigger finger from the second joint only. Now, the second principle of the trigger control is the direction of the actual press of the trigger. What is the answer? Straight back. Now, by actual press of the trigger, we mean here is of the moment that the trigger is prepped, like you're touching a wall, from that moment to the actual bank or 
hammer drop. That very short tolerance of movement, this is where you need to focus to be straight back. Trigger control in general, it's mental control. Now, if you use the subconscious mind to visualize a specific image and try to replicate that image, we are you're going to apply the principle even without knowing that. Regardless where you place the trigger finger on the trigger, if you visualize that straight back pull, you will be successful and the hit will be dead on. For this first demonstration, I will press the trigger by placing only the very tip of my trigger finger on the actual trigger itself. Then I will move it to the middle of the pad and then all the way into that first joint. Let's see what happens utilizing the Mantis. First repetition at the very tip. Ninety-five point one. Now, one really neat thing about the Mantis is when I dry fire or live fire the shot, I can look at an actual graphic of what is occurring before, during, and after the shot. The blue line indicates what's occurring right before the shot fires. The yellow indicates as the gun is firing, and the red indicates what's happening after the gun fires, or as in recoil. So it's a very useful tool to look at your before, during, and after shot processing. Now, I will demonstrate by placing the middle of that first pad on the face of the trigger. 95.2. Now, I will demonstrate by placing the trigger face at the very first crease or joint of the trigger finger. Let's see if it actually moves it off target. 96.9. As you can see by the results that Mantis shows, all of those shots were very, very precise and would have been on target. It doesn't matter where I place my finger on the trigger as long as I only move the trigger finger and I move it straight to the rear. The Mantis will help you in your quest for that really excellent trigger pull. Some of you may be asking, why am I not aiming at a target? Well, the whole point of this is to focus on one and only one thing, which is the trigger press, isolating the action of the trigger finger. I don't want to confuse myself by placing a target in front of me when I haven't demonstrated the ability to control the trigger correctly. So we would recommend that you focus on one thing at a time and then layer things on top of each other as you achieve mastery. So now we're gonna test it in live fire. First shot, I'm gonna place the very tip of my trigger finger onto the face of the trigger. The second shot, I'll place it in the middle of that first pad. The third shot, I'll place it at that first joint. Let's see what the Mantis shows us. 92.9. Another feature that the Mantis provides is it gives you an actual score of how still you were as you press the trigger. On this particular graphic, it shows a score of 92.9, but additionally, it also shows the direction in which the gun moved as the trigger was pressed. In this case, just very slightly up, straight up. Now, I will demonstrate by placing the middle of that first pad on the face of the trigger. 96.3. Now, I will demonstrate by placing the trigger face at the very first crease or joint of the trigger finger. 95. It doesn't matter where I place my finger on the trigger as long as I only move the trigger finger and I move it straight to the rear. The most important part of the trigger pull is the actual break. 
when that round discharges. What happens before is of minor importance, but what happens as the round fires will influence whether you get that acceptable hit or not. So I just talked about that, that error chart. Now, you may be surprised, but we came up with our own error chart, which we believe is much more accurate when it applies to practical shooting, when it applies to shooting for points in minimum time or shooting to save lives. If you look at this error chart, you can see that rounds going straight down are the result of anticipation. That is a physical reaction to the gun firing, pushing the gun straight down. Now, if you see shots going low left or low right, depending on which is your dominant hand, that's an indication of a flinch in which you have a sympathetic squeeze of your other fingers of the firing hand as you press the trigger. You can look at several of our videos on the TPC website that helps explain this even further and gives you solutions to correct this error. If you see shots going straight up, that's a result potentially of healing the gun. It's a reaction to the recoil of the gun. You're trying to control the recoil of the gun by pushing forward with the heel of your hand, in effect, forcing the muzzle to climb up as you fire the shot. So now if you look at the trigger chart, you see if shots are going left or right. That's more indicative of some inconsistency or change in your grip pressure. When you place the proper biomechanical efficiency on the back of the gun, and we explain this in our Nutcracker video, you're applying equal pressure side to side to the gun to keep it centered. We'll use the principle of maximizing the biomechanical efficiency. Using that principle will achieve more pressure and more pressure will create more friction. That will improve the connection of the grip the hands with the gun. Nutcracker effect. Nutcracker has a hinge in front, it has a jaws here, and it has a levers or handles. How are we going to replicate the effect of the nutcracker with our hands? One more time. We have the hinge, we have the jaws, we have the handles. We have the hinge, we have the jaws, we have the handles. We need to keep our fingers really tight and we need to create a very good friction on the front strap of the gun when we gripping the gun. From here, we will apply pressure. Keep the hands close to your body, close to your chest, and we're going to apply a pressure heel of your palm against the heel of your palm. From here, we hold that same pressure. We'll imagine that we are crushing a walnut and we hold that walnut crushed between the heels of our palms. Simply, we're going to extend our arms and the leverage that the forearms will provide will build additional pressure on the heels of our palms. And that additional pressure will create more friction and will close the back of the gun pretty tight. So we will achieve that 360 degree wrap around the gun. That will hold the gun very steady and stable in our hands. Many times in reaction to a shot going off, one hand or the other can relax. And that counter tension or pressure can relax pushing the gun to the opposite side if that tension isn't maintained. We really like to emphasize that the grip, once it's set, it's like a set of vice grips. It doesn't change. Once you set it in your hands, only the trigger finger moves. We want to avoid changing any pressure in the grip, both with your shooting hand and your control hand as the gun fires. The Mantis helps in demonstrating whether you're maintaining that alignment of the gun. And it allows you to pay attention to what you're actually doing, what your body is actually doing at the exact moment the gun fires. It really will help you learn to call your shot.
So if you're finding value from this training series, please like, share, and subscribe. We really appreciate your time and attention.